So I also wanted to be a midwife. So I said to myself, look, I want to be a midwife or an actor. Which choice am I going to make? You know, being an actor, you could fail. It's very unlikely you'll be successful. It's very hard to make a living. I saw my dad struggle to raise us. Mm. But I said, look, more than being an actor or being a midwife, I want to be a brave person. Mm. So I'm going to commit between 18 and 19 to being brave. That's my job. So the scarier thing is to try to be an actor. So I'm going to commit to failing every day for a year towards being an actor. So I went on an audition or I'd dissect a movie or I'd take an acting class every day. I'd get terrible feedback from auditions sometimes. And I'd say, you know what? I'm such a badass. I'm going to show up at the next audition and still audition. I'm not going to let it shut me down because my real job is to be brave. Wow. And through that, I ended up getting a job. Had I not given myself the freedom to fail, I would mm. never have succeeded. Mm. Wow. That, that, that is a powerful Isn't story. it? It's a powerful way of looking at the world. I mean, where did that worldview come from? I mean, America makes a fetish out of success. We know Tennessee Williams' great essay, The Catastrophe of Success. But America fetishizes success as if failing somehow pushes you out. And of course, we got the neo-fascist gangster in the White House that very talk about failure makes him shudder. You know, mm. like, like yes. Yes. the realm of the mothers in, in Goethe's class. <laughs> where, where, where'd you get this view of the centrality of courage and bravery, Dosa? I think my parents had it, honestly. I mean, my mom mm -hmm. was diagnosed with breast cancer um, and it was third stage. And she did a lot of research. She was a brilliant woman. You would have loved her. Great poet. Yes, yes, yes. Amazing woman. Um, and so she ended up doing alternative methods. But watching my mom, because she said, look, there's already a shadow on my lung. I'm really early fourth stage. But talk about bravery. I mean, watching wow. someone battle that in front of you. She was such a badass when we were little kids. Uh, there's a story that when a bus, they were waiting for the bus, her and my sister. And when the bus came, they wouldn't stop to let this handicapped person on. Um, so my mom just laid down in front of the wheels of the bus Ooh. until they Ooh. stopped and let them on the bus. So wow. she was really a powerful Ooh, woman. She, she wow. was special. Well, wow, that's, that's, she, that's incredible. Oh, that's mm. a, mm. Yeah. No, we understand where you come from. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Know, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have a little tiny bit of her power. You know? Wow. Wow. Yeah. But, you know, it's you know, it's not only the courage to to fail, but it's also not to internalize that rejection as having anything to do with you. Exactly. Right? Right. So, so right. say more. Because, I mean, in acting, it's all about rejection. You're you're at the will of all this whole. The, all these parties, sometimes you're in a room with 30 producers and the network and all these people and it can just destroy you because um, you're also an artist, but it's not true. I mean, luckily because my dad was an actor, he said, sweetie, all you do is you do your research beforehand, you prepare yourself, you go in the room, you have fun, you do the best job you can, you explore and then you leave it there and it's out of your hands. and it." It's really not your business what they think of you. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, it's still hard. You know, it's hard because, you know, it's human nature. We want affirmation. That's that's, you know, we, we don't want to go and be be rejected. But it's it's very important lesson. And to do it between 18 and 19 is so perfect before before there's so much to worry about, right? Um, when, when, when you're early enough in, in your development to, to solidify that kind of thinking and that approach. I mean, that's, that's amazing. And I mean, it's, it's, I, I'm gonna take this, I'm, I might bring this to my own career at this point <laughs> and give myself a whole year of, of failure, planned failure, you know what I mean? Because basically anything that happens that's not a horrible failure is, is like gravy. It's like, hey. This Actually, is every failure is a success. 
Oh, that's because even more intense. You see, I still haven't let go of the success model because I'm like, well, failures are fine, but maybe there'll be a little tiny bit of success. <laughs> well, it is. Okay, because tell me what you mean. <laughs> the payoff you get when you get a failure. I mean, I'm going to tell you, I'd go on an aud audition. I made a choice. It was such a boring part. Okay. It was like a nothing part of the secretary, like, you know, Mr. Weaver, you have a call on line three. It was like nothing. So I decided just to play her like a total ditz. Like during the audition, I was like dropping papers and like forgetting things. It's kind of spacing out. And anyway, I left. My agent got a call from the casting director. What the hell was wrong with her? She was horrible. You know, that was the worst, <laughs> the worst audition I ever had. I said, call them back and tell them that was my acting choice. That's not who I am. But as a woman, you assume that's who I am. This is a right. boring ass part. And this was my choice I decided to make to make it more interesting for me. You don't have to like it, it's fine. But I was really proud of myself for taking a chance and making a choice. And once I got that you know, negative response, instead of shutting down, when I got my next audition, I was like, the, the prize that I get is totally committing myself again. Okay, there, years ago, sometimes in acting, I'll do different things. Like I have these medicine cards, which are different Native American animals. And I might pull some on a project. And I was doing this, we were building toilets in Haiti, compost toilets. Um, and I pulled the snake card. And snake medicine is people who can ingest poison from a snake and they ingest it and they keep getting bit and they get stronger and stronger and they build up an immunity to poison, which makes them super strong. So that's kind of how I looked at failure. Actually, every failure that came to me, I took it and I put it in me and I transformed it into medicine. And I said, that's great. I will take that failure and instead of it being my kryptonite, it's going to nourish me mm -hmm. and it's going to nourish my strength to push through. Mm. Mm. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's, that's some powerful wisdom. Yeah, that really powerful is. We're going to have to keep that. We're going to take, we're going to keep that on the tie rope. I'm going to put that in my little <laughs> pocket. Um, oh, I, I'm trying to think through some of my failures. If I could transmute them and transform oh, them Lord. into the medicine. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be, I'd be, I'd be more be, powerful than ever. 